Hi guys, and welcome to another Bitucational brought to you by yours truly and Bitburger Null Null, as you all know, my proud partners who also gave me this nice whoop sweater for Christmas. So I'm just wrapping their merch, you know, still in a festive mood, even though Christmas is uh, long over. And today we will talk about a hero that is pretty, pretty strong right now. I've been talking about it a bit on my stream, about uh, potentially doing another tutorial, AKA hero guide. So I asked around and we kind of came to a conclusion that Puck is a pretty good candidate. Of course, if you guys have any input or have any wishes for the future, you know, feel free to comment down below in the comment section or come to my stream on Twitch, tell me there. Message me on Twitter, Instagram, you know, all that stuff. I read my messages. If you have anything that you want to know, just, uh, you know, let me know what it is and why and what you would like to see, and maybe we can make it happen. So, let's first of all try to figure out what, like, why is Puck a good hero? So, let's look at my recent games personally. So, here, this is after the new patch came out, uh, 7.28. Uh, with the Aghanim Shard and so on and so on, yada yada. So since then, we've played 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 games, and we seem to be 7 and 3. Generally, we have pretty decent performances. We had this game today where if I play better, we would have won, so take it as you, t take it as you wish, 8, 2, 7, 3, yada yada, uh, same story. But uh, let's have a quick look as to what happened to this hero and maybe why the hero is a bit better now than he was before. Did he just straight up get buffed or was there something else? So first of all, of course, as you all know, 7.28, every hero got a Aghanim Shard. Um, Puck Shard is... Um, Pretty okay. It's a waiting rift makes it deal more damage and it knocks people over, and it knocks people back 250 uh, distance over 0.4 seconds. It does not interrupt TPs yada yada, but it reveals invisible enemy units and wards in the area. And also, I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. Obviously, if you do have a knockback on a hero like Park, you can push people out of coil, which, yes, you guessed it, is a pretty strong combo. So let's just have a look. We're gonna do this in the client. Uh, we're gonna look over towards my good old friend, the Puck. So, in 7.28, Puck had a couple of buffs, as we can see here. Agility gain increased from 2.2 to 2.5. So that's, you know, that's pretty nice. 2.3 more agi gain. His turn rate was improved from 0.5 to 0.8. I don't know exactly how much that does, but it's a buff, obviously. You turn faster and so on. Which also means that generally after phase shift, uh, it's going to be a tip that I'll, or yeah, something I'll go into later. If you are phase shifting and then you want to blink out into a direction, you always need to blink towards the direction that you're facing. So if you do ever make a mistake, it will make you turn faster and give the enemies less time to react to stunning you before you get your orb off, your blink off, etc. Then, his illusory orb damage was increased by 5, 10, 15, and 20 per level. Waning Rift max damage was increased by 25. The max distance was increased by 25. The Dream Coil Scepter Link breaks down, it was uh, rescaled. 0 0.2, 0 0.25 more, and then the same. The initial damage was increased by 25, 50, and 75. That's not bad at all. His level 10 talent was slightly increased, and his level 25 talent... Um, the range was adjusted to the bonus range he got in the initial patch and the AoE 25 less, I guess. But either way, so there you have that. And then here, this is what the shard looks like, as you can see here. Puck uses the W and he pushes people away. I wish they would show it again. It, it's shown pretty badly. Uh, let me show you the. Let me show it to you in a game real quickly. So um, there's a lot of things that we're gonna talk about. Puck. This is probably gonna be a two-part. Maybe we're gonna make three parts. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll we'll have to see how that's gonna pan out because there's a lot of things about Puck from. Orb, you'll go to orb, from silence Q combo, from coil into silence into orb combos, to item builds, uh, coil placement. A lot of people don't understand that there's a lot of different types of coil placements, like for different situations. Do you want them to stay in the coil? Do you want them to snap the coil? Uh, what's the situation? Are you giving them space to run? Do you not want them to run? 
Okay, so as we said, guys, the Puck Shard, it can obviously push people away. Sadly, it is not quite enough damage to push them out of your coil. I actually thought it was enough that when you buy this uh, and then you coil them, that you are able to push them out. But if you do it yourself, you cannot. If they run further more to the outside, then you can obviously push them out. But you yourself, only with this shard, you cannot push somebody out. Here, this is about the, the max you can do. And then if you push them, they uh, don't quite go out of range. So here, then you go boom, and it's very close. Like one little step and boom, they break it. So if you do coil and they run more, let's say you coil them and they like step out like this far and they're getting ready to, you know, for to wait for it to break, for the duration to run out. If you then just do it properly and you have the radius down, like, you know, if they run this far and you're like, oh, okay, they're this far, boom. You W, you push them out, and so there's the shard, and then there's other types of tricks, like, you know, you have your good old four staff puck, force them out, break it, get some more damage, boom, boom, there we go. And, yeah, so, that's step one, like, this hero received quite a few buffs, and then, of course, in 7.28, we had the addition of a couple of new items, you have your witch blades, and all these types of stuff, but witch blade is, like, definitely one of the best ones. Uh, actually, I don't even know what else you got on Puck. Like, Bloodstone is pretty solid on Puck. Wishblade, I've seen Gleipnir from Puck. Like, all this type of stuff. So, in the most recent patch, you received a small nerf on the Dream Coil. Cooldown was increased by uh, 10, 10, 10, 10 on all levels. And the Waning Rift cooldown on level, hits level 20, talent was slightly reduced. So, let's have a quick look as to what Puck is good against, okay? Like, why do you pick Puck? What do you like to play against? What are you not good against? So, a hero like Puck, there are many, many, many small things that we will have to cover and talk about um, in this little tutorial, in this little hero guide that we have going. So, step one. What do you like to play Puck against? Puck is obviously amazing against heroes that have targeted stuns. You know, not stuns that are instant, but ones that have, like, flying projectiles such as Rave King. So if you ever are playing against a Rave King, you know, he's gonna level his stun, he's gonna stun you, you're like, haha, I go face shift. You can always look at what the hero is best versus and what he is worst versus. Generally, uh, Puck, um, Puck just does not like to play against heroes that have AoE silences or instant stuns. That is really, really bad for the hero. Even though you can navigate against silences and so on, like uh, Skyref, you can buy Yules. Uh, heroes like heroes like Go Orchids, you can also go Yules. But let's say you play against a, um, let's say you play against a, uh, let's say you play against a Night Stalker. Okay, let's say you're playing against this guy, and this guy does this. You are going to have some trouble, because you are not going to be able to use any spells. There are definitely some tricks that you can go for if you do play against a Night Stalker, who is uh, going for this. And it's the fact that you can try to, like, you can try to use and then blink out if you haven't taken any damage for a little bit. If you play against a hero like uh, Night Stalker, you need to be a bit creative. Like, this hero, for instance, is pretty annoying for you. You can't... Uh, one of the ways we can get out is like if you Yule, uh, if you try to Yule yourself and then blink out, of course. Or you can, one of the best ways to deal with it is that you have a four staff and then like, the problem is that the silence lingers a little bit so you can still get away. Uh, so you're still silent, so you need to be careful about how far away you are from the hero. But okay, let's first of all look at the pros and cons of this hero. If you are playing against a hero such as Ember Spirit, okay. If you play against this type of hero, why is Puck so damn good against Ember Spirit? Because when you coil him, when you coil him, he can't use fists. He can't. He can use remnants, but he can't go to them. So like this leash mechanic that they uh, put into the game a while ago is so 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 damn strong. Like it is. It ruins so many heroes: anti mage, Ember Spirit, etc. And generally, the way you want to combo Puck, right? You coil them, you hit them, yada, yada, yada. And if there are escape heroes, such as Ember and so on, you hold your silence until the end, so you have even more duration of time before they can use their spells and stuff like that. So let's go into a few, like, cute little tips, I guess. So when you play Puck, a lot of people, like, don't know how long, 
your orb goes. Like, how long can you wait? Okay? And it's generally, when the three second mark comes up, like after three second, after three seconds, your orb vanishes. So it's 11, 10, and towards the end, when it's gonna count down the third second after the cooldown, like at the start, it goes from 13, 12, 11, 10, then it's 12, 11, 10, 9, because the cooldown gets reduced by every level, right? So here, you see the numbers going down, boom. You can probably go like a little more. Uh, you don't quite have an indication. Max distance is 1950. So, you can also kind of hear it with the sound. You can like do it by sound cue. But generally, like the more often you do this, you'll kind of get the, the gist of it, the hang of it. So like three seconds-ish. Like when it goes down to nine, that's like the tail end. I don't think you, you can't go much more than what I did just like right there. Yeah, I, you can't go much further than that. So if you ever have a Yule Scepter on Puck and you are looking to escape, but maybe your face shift is on cooldown because uh, let's say you face shift, blink, okay, so you're face shifting, you're blinking, and now the spells are on cooldown. You can orb Yules, and like I said, you have about a three second timing before your orb vanishes. So what you can always do is, if you orb and instant Yules, and then spam John, you will always go to the orb. And it is such a great escaping tool that I think a lot of people don't know about. So you just orb, you spam Yules, spam John, boom. You're escaping. Even if you don't have the Blink Dagger ready, even if you don't have Phase Shift ready, it's a very damn strong tool of how to go about it. Okay, let's look at... I mean, I, f I would say that Puck's skill build is fairly straightforward. You get a level in Phase Shift, generally, depending on your lane, and you max out your Q and W. But I'm going to give you reasons as to why I think you should generally max out the W. Obviously, both spells... Um, are a little bit of a maneuvering tool, the W less so than your orb. So, first of all, the W scales, they both nearly scale the same, okay? It's 75 damage a pop on your Q, it is uh, 70 damage, so it's 5 damage per level difference on your waning rift. But um, if you max out this first, and then you have the same level of this, let's say you have 1 for 1 build, okay? 1 for 1 for the sake of uh, ease. Ease of execution, ease, ease to talk about it. When you max out the silence, it has 13 seconds cooldown. If the orb is level 1, they perfectly align at 13 seconds each. Whereas if you max out the orb first, it's 10 seconds. But you only have your silence every 16 seconds if you were to go 4 one, one, one. On top of all this, your Q is obviously your escaping tool as well. Let's say you're pushing out a side lane. You don't want to push out a side lane... Let's say, like, this is going towards the enemies, right? You don't want to go like this and then be like, Oh my god, they're coming. I'm going to silence away. No, no, no. What you should do, the way you should push out the wave, is not by aggressively orbing. What you can always do is that you just silence into the wave. Or like, you just silence to push the wave and you hold your orb. Or a different way to do it, too, is you silence into the wave, you orb backwards, you phase shift, and boom, off we go. Done. Done deal. So I would generally tell you to... I like to go a, like two levels in orb and then you max out the waning rift, but it kind of depends on the lane, what you're up against, what you need. In some lanes, you can also go greedy. You can just go illusory orb into waning rift. Not a problem whatsoever. Um, so let's talk about some small, a few things that Puck can perhaps get out of and why. Why can he? So if you are playing against a faceless void, you can get out of chrono but only under a certain condition, which is... Uh -huh. Which is... You need to blink out the direction you are facing during your phase shift. This is important. If I am facing this way, and there's a chrono, I can only blink out this way. If we try it the other way around, my hero upon arriving out of phase shift, we'll try to turn. And once it tries to turn, it gets chronosphered because I'm not instantly blinking out. So let's try that. Oh, shit. See how my hero turned a little bit to the left? Yep. No, no. It, it, that, ain't, that ain't gonna work, chief. The turn rate did get improved, but while well, I'm inside of a chronosphere. So if you are ever playing puck and you're looking to get away, you need to understand which direction you're blinking into. Okay? 
you need to understand which direction you're going in. Which direction which direction are you facing? Where do you want to go? Because if you're getting if you're if you wanna go away and let's say you wanna go here, but then you face shift like this and now you blink there, they have like a 0.3 second window. Like if there's any spell on top of you, it will catch you. So understand where you're going. You can also, if I'm not mistaken, you can click you can right click to turn and face shift right away. Pay close attention. And when I come out, I am actually looking south. Let's try it again, just to showcase it. So if it's very important for you to which direction you're going to, do this before you face shift. One little click, face shift. Now let it come out of face shift. You're facing downwards. It's if This stuff is very important, especially the more puck you're going to end up playing. It's super useful for you to know these things. So click down, face shift, wait for it to, wait for it to go away. Boom, we're facing downwards. Of course, the auto attack makes me shoot at this guy, but it's fine. So let's look at some other little nifty and nice tricks. So, as I said before, the coil break is really, really high damage. So you can wait as long as possible. Like, you keep hitting this guy, and if there is an opportunity, like maybe you have a coddle, a keeper of the light in your team, and he has blinding light. Hit, 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 four staff, or blind out, boom. It is so much damage. It is so, so, so much damage. I will go into uh, some other things in the next episode of this tutorial about Dream Coil, like how to place it properly, how you get the most out of it, the most value, the most time, the most auto attacks, uh, and so on. But that is going to be paired up with gameplay where I show you uh, specific examples of how to do it. So next up, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna talk about his talents real quick, a couple different item builds, and then we'll try to wrap up like this um, quick part one. I would say let's let's call it a quick part one as to why and how and what happens with this type of hero. So his talents, you have either cast range 150 or 30 damage. So both those talents obviously very strong. Like because if you um, if we remember the 150 cast range, it also makes your it increases the cast range of how far you go with your waning rift. Like now suddenly you're going way, way, way further further with this spell. It is very strong. It is really, really strong. So like it, it's just very nice. Level 15 talents, you have Spell Amplification and Phase Shift Attack. Level 20, you have Wailing Rift and 50% Illusory Orb. Level 25, you have the Dream Coil Rapid Fire, where you keep auto-attacking anything that's coiled, even if you're Phase Shifted, or 275 Wailing Rift AoE range. So, if you just... If you want to dumb it down and like kind of understand it easily, level 10 talent, you have two choices. Spell casting with uh, cast range or physical attack with damage. Level 15, you kind of have the same choice again. Phase shift attack is this time your physical component of a talent. Whereas spell amplification, again, is if you want to be a spell caster. You're more about your spells, you're more about your items. Level 20, it's double spell casting. Level 25 is once again a bit more spell casting with the Waning Rift AoE and then Dream Coil Rapid Fire is obviously your physical damage choice, so to say, if you want to call it. So, when and how do you decide which talents to take? It is absolutely dependent on the game and which items you think or you know you're going to be going. Um, it will depend from game to game. It will always be different. Like also, if you look here, there's uh, quite a few items. Even though I haven't adjusted this in a while, like there should be a witch blade somewhere in there. Uh, Bloodstone is here. Cool. E blade is here. Uh huh. Very nice. So let's just have a uh, quick look at some of the games I played in this patch and which items uh, I went for and why. So in this type of game. I really like the Urn of Shadows. It's a, a casual urn on this hero is super nice. Generally, when you do play this hero in the offlane, you need either A, a bottle, or B, an urn. Because if you don't buy either of these items, you're going to end up spending a lot of money on consumables, salves, clarities, etc. And I feel like bottle obviously solves both in a way. You get HP, you get mana from it, and then you have Urn of Shadows. Urn of Shadows gives you passive mana region, two stats, and two armor. Puck is a hero with zero armor, zero base armor. It's one of the biggest weaknesses of this hero. He is... You don't want to be hit, okay? So an urn comes in very handy, and he's a low HP hero, which means if you do have urn charges, you heal yourself a lot. So again, an urn also kind of helps you. If you ever get charges, you can heal yourself. It passively grants you mana regen, gives you stats, so that's very good. So in this game, I went Scotty. And you can imagine that if you're going Scotty, you're going damage 
and the phase shift attack talent. The reason I did it this game is that I felt like they're gonna burst me. Like, potentially, I could die in this game if I get hexed or tiny common into hex, but I was like, that might happen no matter what items I have, right? Like, unless I go Lincolns, but you don't wanna go Lincolns on Puck. So instead of spending 5k gold on a Lincolns, I could spend 5k gold on a Scotty. I make myself that much more tanky that even if they're gonna eventually get to hex me or roar me, tiny combo into a silence, hex into a silence, whatever, that, well, let them do it on me, but then I'm still gonna live. And the Scotty is super good once you catch the Puck, and it's super good against the BKB Bloodseeker that he was gonna go for. So remember, guys, items. Be creative with your items, okay? Don't always go the same stuff. Just don't. Take it from me. Like, just learn. Even if you make some mistakes, it's absolutely fine, guys. Don't worry about it. And in the next episode, we're going to look at some of these games, and I'm going to showcase the items to you, and I'm going to tell you why I thought that those items in that scenario were good, or maybe why they weren't good. So in this game, for instance, again, we have... It looks like I was a mid-puck this time around. Um... Mid puck can differ a bit from a side lane puck. Uh, maybe you want boots of travel. Maybe you want to rush a veil. I used to be a big fan of the veil rush, but I wouldn't say it's as good right now because there's other items you can go for. So here we just went the normal treads bottle. I did go for an urn as well once again in this game. And then in this game around, I went Maelstrom. Why am I going Maelstrom? I see that they have a lot of like low HP type heroes, kind of low HP type heroes. Void Spirit support doesn't have the biggest HP pool. Pangos support low HP pool. I mean, one of them is core. Uh, I guess the voice for was core. Then they have a PL. Maelstrom, super good against PL. And I can solo kill the Cardo too. And you can imagine if I am going Maelstrom, I for sure went the 30 damage talent into the phase shift attack talent. So that is that was very good. And then my next item, straight up Mjolnir. I just man up, I hit them. And then for the little bit a second earn. So in two games, I went for the damage into phase shift. Let's see if we can find a game where it maybe it was a little different than that. So here I played support puck. I went Veil Rush, which I think is great on support puck. If you do ever end up playing post 5 puck, or post 4 puck, understand that the reason you do play 5 puck is that you play in the trees. If you make the support trade with you, you can always orb to the side and get a pull off. You will occupy them to trade with you, and at 12 seconds or 42 seconds, if the uh, uh, easy camp is open, you orb over while you're trading, you hit the camp, you pull it up, and boom, pull. That's one of the strengths of this hero. And if you do ever play at 5, I would suggest you to buy either Veil, Blink, or your Russian Aghanims, Blink Axe, etc. So this game, I hope I went for Cast Range. Yep, Cast Range into Spell Amp, because as a support and with uh, with less farm, you're not as uh, incentivized to right-click or build for right-click damage. I am... What's, what is the most important in this game is simply my spell casting. So my spell casting is very important. What do we do in, in this loss here? I went for a more physical build, by the looks of it, which with a urn... Earn into Witchblade. So finally, we do have a game where I went for a Witchblade, which I think is one of the strongest items of the patch, especially on a hero like Puck. It actually gives this hero so, so many things that he loves to have. He gets attack speed, which I would say is pretty damn underrated on this hero. This hero, when, like I said, a good Puck game is a game where they don't have many instant stuns against you. Something I haven't touched on, like, that much earlier on are which heroes are that good against Puck? Well, I mentioned silences, I think, and instant stuns, but well, what are instant stuns? There are a lot of annoying heroes against Puck. One of the most known counters over of all time is Dragon Knight because you don't harass him in the lane no matter what role matchups it is mid versus mid, offlane versus carry, etc. Like, he has too much armor, he has too much HP region, and he will always, he can always blink stun. You, it is super hard to react to that. A good Dragonite will not let you get out. Uh, Earthshaker, very annoying for you to deal with. Fisher from long range into Blink Totem or Blink Echo, hard to deal with. Uh, clockwork can be very annoying. A good Clockwork player can hook you from, once again, high range into Cogs. It's like a two second plus lockdown. And it's not super good for you to deal with. A good Earth Spirit as well, hard to deal with. That's the wrong hero. Good Earth Spirit rolls on you. While he's rolling in, he silences you. Then the silence connects, the roll connects, etc. If you yule yourself, he can roll on you again. Uh, an another another annoying hero is Nyx Assassin. You need to, if you play against Nyx Assassin, A, you need to be really careful how you use your spells. Okay? You need to be really careful. 
you have an Ixos Assassin here, and you want to farm the wave. Let's say you're expecting him to be in this, okay? Let's do this. Let's do this. He is vendetta here. So if you know you're orbing the wave, let's say this is mid lane, okay? You know that you're doing this. You need to, as the orb hits the wave, if you are anticipating him, you need to phase shift, okay? It is super important that you phase shift when the where you anticipate the Nyx to be to uh, carapace your spell. Because obviously, he's going to stun you. He's just going to do this. So not only are you dodging the stun, you're also dodging the damage. And another thing, if you ever coil a Nyx, okay, and you're not getting to silence him, any good Nyx player, you know what they're going to do? Carapace run out of coil. Not only are they dodging all the coil damage, look how much damage you take. This is going to be level 2 coil. Boom. That's a lot of damage on a Puck. Puck is not the highest HP hero. So, two ways. If you do ever coil a Nyx, try to do this. Coil silence. Because now in the time, that is a combo that, again, I'll tell you next time. Like, if you're ever against a Queen of Pain, but you don't have, like, in quite enough space to reach them, uh, to reach her early on, because you don't have the cast range talent, okay? Um, one good way to get on top of these heroes, because right now I can't reach... Okay, apparently I can reach because I have the talent. But let's say I'm here. I can't reach, right? So what you do is you coil. And coil has, obviously, a initial small stun. I'm actually very surprised it doesn't say, here, hero, stunning them for 0.5 seconds. So what you can do is you coil them. And in the coil stun, it gives you enough time to run up in silence. But this is only if you're lacking the reach. Because otherwise, the way you want to do it against your embers and queens is that you coil them first. And then you wait, you wait, you wait, and boom. That's how you go for it. It's more like if you need to like interrupt them, have them stun, do it cleanly. Um, because like I said, if you want to have the max duration and they have like no real counterplay, you can just coil them and chill and then do it nicely like this. Yeah, so I mean the main point being, if you are against like a Jugger or a Nyx, right, the way you want to go about it, like let's say it's a Jug, you can't just do this to a Jug. He's going to spin, right? Or you can just, if you don't have range, if you don't have range for the silence on a Jugger, like that's probably a pretty good, like, uh, let's say you're in the laning phase against a Jug, okay? And the Jug obviously has spin. You can't just... Uh, silence like you can't I can't reach the silence right now so how are you gonna make this kill happen how can you call for a TP and then kill him the way you do it is that if this this isn't enough range without the cast range challenge you coil him in the coil stun you silence him okay and now this gives you and your partner depending on what level you are 3 seconds or 3.5 seconds to kill him before he can spin obviously when they're coiled he can TP out as well Another small tip, if you ever play against Io Relocate and the Io is low HP, you can coil him because what's going to happen is that when the Io is going to be relocating out, level up enemy. That looks really weird. It says 17, but it's not. So when the Io reloads out, haha. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, when the IO reels out, doo -doo 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 he's gonna take a lot of damage. So let's say you have Veil, Coil, Boom. He reels out. Look how much damage he's gonna take. He goes from 870 to 540. So if people are like being reload or Underlord rifted, it's also like a very good like understanding that they can still die. You know, just because oh no, they're getting away. No, 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 no. The scepter, the coil break is super strong. Now, we're going to talk about a few items, and I think then we're going to wrap up this part one. Uh, so there's different ways, as I've already stated, of how you can build Puck. You can build him as a right clicker, spellcaster, and then you kind of need to understand, what is your role as Puck? Puck is generally a hero that doesn't just go in and kill someone. Okay, You go in and you interrupt people. You keep them there. You interrupt them. You basically, you, you play someone like this. You're like a weaver type hero. You go in, you weave back out, you go back in. So if you have like the fight started, there's two spellcasters in the back line. You coil, you silence, you orb this way. Let's pretend that this, you know, in an ideal way, the way you go in, 
You do this, you coil, you silence, you orb back to your team this way, you hit once, you face shift, your game starts lagging, you go back out, now you wait, maybe you get to hit a few people because you know, ah, oh, okay, I can hit this guy because they're still coiled here. Now you have your spell soon, so you're looking to re-engage, who's important to silence? Oh, this guy, the Earthshaker's about to blink in, blink in, silence, yule this guy up, orb back, and like, just make sure you orb in good directions, like, so that you're safe. It's important with Puck, you're not a go in, use your spells, die, and be happy type hero, you know? Puck is a hero that you need to stay alive. The strength of the hero is that he is so elusive and so damn hard to catch. That is like the main strength of this hero. And generally that is what you itemize for. If you play Puck against a Silence, you buy Yules. Or maybe you buy a Lotus Orb. Here in this game, for instance, I buy a Force Staff. I'm playing Puck against Ricky Maru. And... That instantly triggers me to buy a Force Staff because of Smoke Cloud. And also for so many other reasons. Like Force Staff and Puck is very underrated because it gives you some int, it gives you some HP region, it's okay. But you need to remember, it's not only good defensively, you can use it to push people out of your coil, either to kill them, uh, stun them, deal more damage. You can also save your allies with it. So this item is very, very strong. Then I went for a Gold Scepter after because I was like, maybe I'm going to go E-Blade. Uh, E-Blade, once again, is also an item that can be used aggressively and defensively, which is generally the, the way you want to go with Puck. Like, you don't want to buy items that are only defensive. You may be able to buy some items that are only offensive, but generally you buy hybrid items on this type of hero. And then I go Axe. Why do you go Axe? If you play Puck against heroes like Bad Rider, who are going to rush BKB, Juggernaut, Nax, TA with BKB, buy an Axe, you just ruin their game. Like, if you know that they have to go BKB soon, you can already preemptively buy an Aghanims and kind of destroy their game. Let's have a quick look at the last games that we have on this hero. So we only had one Witchblade so far. Here's the second one. So in this game, again, you can see when I go into the off lane or a side lane, it's a very, it's a kind of a static item build. You have this uh, boots into urn, with, maybe with a magic wand. Then you go Witchblade. That build up to Witchblade is so great. Attack speed, intelligence. As I've said it before, Puck's a low armor hero. Witchblade gives you armor. If you do ever get caught and hit, you're very likely to just live. It allows you to right click more often here. As I said, there's a bad rider rushing BKB. You can see, like, I know he's going BKB. I'm going to buy my parts. I just coil him every fight. Now you go travels. Puck is a great travel hero. You're so mobile. You can push lanes. I go Lincolns. Very good item build. Let's go back one. Go this one. See what we have here. It's actually a very similar game. We have a bad rider again, so I'm probably going Ags very early on. Yeah, here a little bit more greedy with the travels, but again, Witchblade. Because the reason why Witchblade is so nice, remember how I said that Puck isn't the guy that goes in, kills one, and goes out, or like just dies? Puck is the type of hero that takes long fights. So items that you can use multiple times, items that have like a 10 second cooldown, 15 second cooldown, such as Blink Dagger, Urn, Witchblade, it's really good. Like you go in, you silence, you orb, you hit a guy. While you're orbing out, you go back to your orb. Five seconds later, you look around. You're going to look to reinitiate, stuff like that. And it's very similar item to, to the game before. I think it's like nearly identical. Uh, this game, they abandoned very early on, I guess. I was going to go Witchblade, uh, as you can see here. It's just very good. Uh, it's just so great on this hero. And then the last game we played today, what happened in this one? Uh, Urn, Null Talisman Boots. Witchblade, just, it's just such a good feels, uh, feels good item. And then, of course, you have the Blink. Uh, let's go into one or two small details that maybe some people aren't aware of, and then we're going to leave the rest for Part 2. Uh, part 2 is going to consist of one... Gameplay, of course. We need to do uh, either gameplay or a replay review of uh, content where I showcase some of the things that I touch on in this episode, such as skill build, item build, talent choices, how to play team fights. Uh, who to go on, how to identify what your job is in in the game as Puck, so you know who to go on and what to do. And other than that, I would say some item choices and maybe some small tips and tricks, coil placement and coil usage, and a bit of like map understanding, where to be with Puck, why, and yeah, just why it pays off and why it's good. So when you are playing Puck, you need to understand your skill build. I already touched on the other stuff, such as this. I would generally advise you your skill build to look something like this. 
um, then you're probably going to do this. And now, you need to understand, if you are rushing a dagger, or if you are close to your dagger, you want maxed out phase shift, level 4 phase shift, when you have blink. Why, you may ask? Because max phase shift is 3.25 seconds. What is the cooldown of blink dagger after you receive damage? It is 3 seconds, which means... What happens if I have level 1 phase shift I get hit? Oh, I can't blink out. What the hell? I can't blink. Why? I'm, I'm a noob. Well, that's why if you are close to your blink, generally how Puck works is that you skip level 2 coil because it's not that good. It has changed a little bit since then as your initial damage goes up by 75, the stun duration goes up by 0.6, the break damage goes up by 100, and the cooldown goes down by 5. But generally, like what you can see, it changed a little bit in the last patch because the best thing you get is the initial damage, right? It goes up by 75. But if you think about it, the other components, the spell, the leveling up the spell only benefits you if they break the coil. Like the break stun duration is only useful once they're running out of coil or if you have four staff to break them out of your coil or if you have a combo that will push them out of coil and the break damage same story this is only a useful skill point if the coil is going to get broke somehow and oftentimes that is not the case so if i'm close to my blink and i'm this is my skill build right now i'm not gonna take the talent i'm not gonna take the ulti on 12 and i'm again not gonna take the ulti on 13 either which is going to give you three skill points, so your skill build is going to look something like boop, 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 like this. Because now when you do have blink, you become close to unkillable. Unless you have a storm with Orchid that is zipping you, you don't have a Yules yet, uh, stuff like that. So your item builds with Puck, um, you need to kind of understand like how to navigate, what is important. If you do play against a storm who's rushing an Orchid, don't go blink dagger, you need to rush a Yule Scepter so you live. Or if you have enough damage, maybe you can rush blink, but then it can that you should only do that if you have the means and the understanding that all you need to do is sit out and then blink call the storm when he first goes in. Because now, when you take damage, phase shift, wait. And remember, the direction you are facing is important. We're facing upwards, he hits us, phase shift, here. We are blinking up, and then nothing can stop us. Nobody, and nothing can stop us. We can blink out of Black Hole. We can blink out of Chronosphere. We can blink out of people pressing Hex on us. It doesn't matter. But if we are being hit, and we phase shift here, and now we try to blink down there, this axe, level 3 axe, is nearly hitting us, okay? Any other hero, like any ground stun, any ability, any hex, any lift, they will drag you out of it. So understand, again, where you are facing. We're facing upwards, take a quick note, okay? I need to blink north, okay, I blink north. Cool, cool and steady, don't lose your cool, okay? Like, don't stress out, understand, oh, okay, I'm looking this way. And you're like, now you're like, oh, fuck, but when I phase shift, I want to go left. So press left, phase shift. Wait, we're looking left, boom, and there you go. That's just how you go about it. So, if you ever have a Yule Scepter on Puck and you are looking to escape, but maybe your phase shift is on cooldown because, uh, let's say you phase shift, blink, okay, so you're phase shifting, you're blinking, and now the spells are on cooldown, you can orb Yules, and like I said, you have about a three second timing before your orb vanishes. So what you can always do is if you orb and instant use and then spam John, you will always go to the orb. And it is such a great escaping tool that I think a lot of people don't know about. So you just orb, you spam use, spam John, boom, you're escaping. Even if you don't have the blink dagger ready, even if you don't have phase shift ready, it's a very damn strong tool of how to go about it. So, let's talk about some small, a few things that Puck can perhaps get out of and why, why can he? So, if you are playing against a Faceless Void, you can get out of Chrono, but only under a certain condition. You need to blink out the direction you are facing during your face shift. This is important. If I am facing this way, and there's a Chrono, I can only blink out this way. If we try it the other way around, my hero 
upon arriving out of phase shift, will try to turn. And once it tries to turn, it gets chronosphered because I'm not instantly blinking out. So let's try that. Oh, shit. See how my hero turned a little bit to the left? Yep. No, no. It, it, that, ain't, that ain't gonna work, chief. The turn rate did get improved, but... Well, I'm inside of a chronosphere. So if you are ever playing Puck and you're looking to get away, you need to understand which direction you're blinking into, okay? You need to understand which direction you're going in. Which direction which direction are you facing? Where do you want to go? Because if you're getting if you're if you wanna go away, and let's say you wanna go here, but then you face shift like this and now you blink there, they have like a 0.3 second window. Like if there's any spell on top of you, it will catch you. So understand where you're going. You can also, if I'm not mistaken, you can click you can right click to turn and face shift right away. Pay close attention. And when I come out, I am actually looking south. Let's try it again, just to showcase it. So if it's very important for you to which direction you're going to, do this before you phase shift. One little click, phase shift. Now let it come out of phase shift. You're facing downwards. It's if This stuff is very important, especially the more puck you're going to end up playing. It's super useful for you to know these things. Force F on puck is very underrated because it gives you some int, it gives you some HP region. It's okay, but you need to remember, it's not only good defensively, you can use it to push people out of your coil, either to kill them, uh, stun them, deal more damage, you can also save your allies with it. So this item is very, very strong. Then I went for a Gold Scepter after because I was like, maybe I'm going to go E-Blade. Uh, E-Blade, once again, is also an item that can be used aggressively and defensively, which is generally the, the way you want to go with Puck. Like, you don't want to buy items that are only defensive. You may be able to buy some items that are only offensive, but generally you buy hybrid items on this type of hero. And then I go Axe. Why do you go Axe? If you play Puck against heroes like Bad Rider who are going to rush BKB, Juggernaut, Nakes, TA with BKB, buy an Axe, you just ruin their game. Like, if you know that they have to go BKB soon, you can already preemptively buy an Aghanims and kind of destroy their game. The reason why Witchblade is so nice, remember how I said that Puck isn't the guy that goes in, kills one and goes out, or like just dies? Puck is the type of hero that takes long fights. So items that you can use multiple times, items that have like a 10 second cooldown, 15 second cooldown, such as Blink Dagger, Urn, Witchblade, it's really good. Like you go in, you silence, you orb, you hit a guy while you're orbing out, you go back to your orb, five seconds later, you look around, you're going to look to reinitiate, stuff like that. And it's very similar item to to the game before, I think it's like nearly identical. I think that's gonna be it for part one. This is more of a theoretical uh, part, as I've stated, but part two is gonna get spicier. So this is more like the, the teaser part to um, get you guys in the mood, help you understand the hero, the role of the hero, maybe the items you buy and so on, how this hero has changed over time and which items are good. And then Hopefully, guys, I will see you for part two, which I will probably get on recording within the next two weeks, two to three weeks. Hopefully, you like this. If you don't like this, please let me know down in the comments. Of course, you guys haven't seen part two yet, so maybe it's hard to judge. But are you guys cool or are you happy with having videos like in different sections? Uh, for instance, in this one, like if this one is more theoretical and tells you more about items and what you're good against, what you're bad against, maybe why the hero's good, why the hero's bad, how you react to different scenarios and like small tips and tricks of spell usage and why maybe you want to skill in a certain way to align your cooldowns or maybe so that it makes sense with your item build and skill build, uh, please let me know. And then hopefully you guys will all stay tuned for part two of this one, which will come out very soon. And other than that, shout out to my great friends over at Bitburger. And I'll see you guys on my stream as always. Thank you for tuning in. And yeah, I just hope this is going to help you guys out. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.